It's time for Net at Night episode, hard to believe, 177. Today, Amber and I will show you how easy it is to make your very own personal web page. In fact, I'll do it during the show with Flavors.me. That and all the web news coming up on Net at Night. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Audio bandwidth for Net at Night is provided by Winamp. Subscribe to Net at Night and all your favorite podcasts with the ultimate media player. Download it for free at winamp.com. Video bandwidth for Net at Night is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y.com. This is Net at Night with Amber MacArthur and Leo Laporte, episode 177, recorded November 16th, 2010, Me. Net at Night is brought to you by Ford and voice-activated Ford Sync, featuring true hands-free calling, turn-by-turn -turn directions, 911 assist, and more. Available exclusively on Ford, Lincoln, and Mercury vehicles. For more details, visit SyncMyRidePodcast.com. It's time for Night and Night from Petaluma, California. I am Leo Laporte. And from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, I'm Amber McCarthy. You are indeed. Hello. How are you? I'm good. I just got back from California, funny enough, but not San Francisco. I was you, in the L.A. area. You never come up and visit us. You, I, In fact, you haven't been to the cottage since it was an empty studio. I know. Here. It's been a long time. But I think the problem is because I do so much speaking about social media, I think it's really saturated in San Francisco with yeah. those types of We don't of need you here. You don't need me. So I go to many other places, but in San Francisco, you know, you can usually find a social Aww. media person. To Poor come Amber. She has to go places like Banff. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, poor Amber. Well, I, I'm going to Paris. So I there. Know. Le Web is coming up December uh, 8th and 9th. I'll speak December 8th at uh, 6 p.m. Paris time, 9 a.m. our time. And we're going to rebroadcast uh, my speech. Um, you know, Loic and I have been going back and forth. He says, why don't you do a show here? Because, you know, they do a three-camera shoot and they stream it on Ustream and everything. And, uh, and I thought about that, but almost everybody that they've got uh, speaking there, and boy, they've got everybody. Kevin Rose is going to be there. Marissa Meyer is going to be there. Um, he says that what we do is we bring Silicon Valley entrepreneurs to Europe so that the European entrepreneurs can see how we do it, you know, Silicon Valley style. And uh, so it's really, it's funny. I mean, it's everybody I know is there. Um, so it's going to be a lot of fun. So instead of, uh, and all of them are going to get to speak. So instead of doing that, I thought I would just do a speech on uh, on the why entrepreneurs are like Luke Skywalker. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, uh, and you just have to watch to find out how, how that works. That's, so is that the uh, title of the presentation? No, I don't know. That's, uh, that's I like it. Tentative. You can use the Star Wars <laughs> font. There's a Star Wars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. So today we're going to talk about Flavors Me. Yeah, flavors.me, which is a, a really cool service that allows you to create your own homepage within, uh, I want to say, just a couple of minutes. So uh, I hope during our interview you will actually sign up and try to use it and see how fast Shall we it test is. it? Shall I test it? Yeah, please do. I mean, it's not going to replace your website entirely. It's just a very simple way to roll your feeds into one destination. And then you, maybe you can push people out to your website. Uh, it's just a, a really great uh, interface. And the designs that you're able to pick from are super easy to use. And uh, it's also free. Sounds cool. It's All right. I'm not, I'm gonna, I'll tell you what. We're going to talk to him in a bit. I'm not going okay. to. Watch. See? My hands Keep are. Keep your hands away from the keyboard. I won't, I won't start <laughs> until he joins us. Okay, good. That's good. <laughs> so hard. I don't want to distract you. I don't. <laughs> no. uh, before, before we talk, there's so much happening in the world. Did you watch the Facebook uh, announcement uh, on I Monday? I sure did. Yeah. And I've been doing interviews about it and writing about it. What do you and, think? Uh, well, it's funny. I wrote an article saying uh, what Facebook messages is not because everybody keeps talking about what it's not. You know, it's not email. It's not this. It's not that. Um, I think that it's not for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> there you go. In, in the sense that I love my Gmail service, and quite frankly, I don't want my text messages and everything in one inbox. It would just overwhelm me. And Facebook for me is kind of more of a you know a fun place to socialize and maybe do a little bit of, of work there. But I just I think it's more for a younger audience. You know, maybe teenagers, twenty somethings, um, generally speaking. Yeah, their whole thing is we're not reinventing email; we're reinventing messaging. Uh, they don't even call it email. They call it messaging. 
And, uh, you know, I'm glad I came back to Facebook. Remember, I, I've, uh, and people are, love to, to ding me for this. Uh, I, I very famously abandoned Facebook, uh, but I had to come back when places came out and now this. There's so much happening through Facebook that even if I don't want to be part of the Facebook universe, I can't. I'm missing out on, a ma on major stories in the tech industry if I don't. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I feel the same way. And so it's, uh, it's one of those things where even though I've written about it and to. I'm not overly excited about it right away, I actually just got an invite from someone at Facebook to try it out. Um, and, you did? Uh, yeah, I did. Um, which is great because, you know, it's hard as tech journalists to talk about all these things until you actually use them. And I can't, um, I haven't, I, I asked for an invite. You know, everybody can go to Facebook.com and say, please let me be part of the Facebook messaging, but I haven't received. So have you, so you've tried it. No, I just got the invite this afternoon. Literally, I wrote an article and I wasn't that positive about it. And so a friend of mine who works at Facebook Canada had said he had just a few invites. He was going to send one to his mom and he sent it to me instead and said, basically, wow. try it out. <laughs> uh, so uh, I'm going to give it a whirl. I mean, I've looked at all the screenshots on Mashable and I'm sure like you, I'm very familiar with it. Um, again, I just, you know, Facebook has so much of my information already. I just don't I want to take that extra step. How do you feel about it? I don't know. I kind of want to reserve judgment until I try it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I think it's pretty clear you wouldn't abandon your Gmail account or whatever you use for real email. Um, you know, the potential for it, it reminds me a little bit of Gmail's priority inbox, right? Because the people who are your Facebook friends get priority. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that part of it is interesting. I know um, Matthew Ingram thought it was a little bit more like uh, Google Wave, uh, which I thought was an interesting okay. Is comment. it more real time? Um, I don't think it is so much, but maybe just the idea that there's, you know, multiple feeds and information going into one destination. Um, uh, but as far as the prioritization, Leo, I'm not sure. I've never seen that really work that well. Um, uh, the Gmail one works okay. It's okay, but it's not perfect. I mean, you really need a human to filter through your emails <laughs> at some point, I think. Well, and a bigger issue for me is that um, many of the people that I do have regular conversations with are not my Facebook friends. Yeah, so, exactly. Including my kids. <laughs> and how do you so. feel, for me too, text messaging. I have this sort of group yeah. of people who I text with. who are, it's, it's not people I necessarily email with a lot or right. necessarily use they Facebook. They should be separate. Yeah, so I like them being separate because text right. messaging has a very different um, purpose, at least in my life, than these other things. It's like, okay, you know, I'm on my way. I'll be there in five minutes. Um, it's, it's a handy little tool, but I don't know if I want that all going into one uh, destination. On the other hand, uh, we all recognize that email is f deeply flawed right now, and I'm open to anybody who thinks that they can improve it and make it better. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, I, I don't know if we talked about it on Net at Night, but there was a report not that long ago talking about how in different parts of the world, like Latin America, for example, you know, they're using social networking to communicate more than they're using email. So email is already kind of dying off. So right. um, I agree, you know, email in some ways is broken. Um, and I do see this being particularly appealing to a younger audience. And I'd love to get, you know, a teenager's view on this because uh, I think they're in a very different space and they just use messaging different right. uh, than people who are a little bit older. I will ask uh, I will ask Henry. Yeah. You know, Scoble's, Scoble's got invitations, but he's selling them for a $50 donation to his charity of choice. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> I thought that was very funny. Um, so uh, I'll try it, and probably by next week we'll be able to give you a We'll, we'll a try it out. We'll see what happens. Um, but also, uh, you just sent me an invite to uh, Google's Hot Pot. Ah, yes. yes. I kind of okay. like that. What do you think? I like it. I just logged in before the show, and I keep wanting to call it Hotspot. I can't. I can't get the name right, but Hot Pot. Do you, do you uh, know Mongolian Hot Pot, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I just, think that's what it is. It doesn't roll off my tongue so well, no. but um, I did uh, I check it out and uh, signed up and uh, made sure you were a friend. And what I like about it, Leo, is how simple it is. You know, the recommendations you can make them um, just in you know a few clicks, and the interface is uh, pretty easy to use. But uh, I just tried before the show, so uh, kind of limited experience. This is their, um, I guess, going up against Yelp. What's interesting about Google, uh, Google already has places. Uh, in fact, if you're a business, uh, this is my advice and certainly something I did myself. If you're a business, you really ought to get your free directory listing in Google places because when people search for your business, uh, you'll, just, you'll have more control. It's like your Google profile for individuals. Places is, you know, for businesses. Um, 
so if you already because of Google Places, Google already knows about a lot of businesses, apparently tens or hundreds of millions yeah. of businesses. So this is kind of a Yelp thing where you review the business. So for instance, um, let me see the Fairmont Royal York. I'm looking at uh, Toronto. Let me see if I can find. A, I know what I'll do. I'll I'll, I'll review the Drake because that's the hotel. Oh yeah, that's that a good used idea. to be a flop house, uh, but is where I would stay. And you know I like it quite a bit. So I click the uh, five stars. I'll give it four stars. Four stars on the rating. And then share a tip, just like uh, Yelp. And I'll say, um, uh, definitely go for the suite. That's where I used to stay. And then so rooms, I think the rooms are good. You only get yes or no, happy face or sad face. Service was excellent. Location, uh, you know, I kind of like the location because it's on uh, Young Street. It's, it's, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, Queen oh, Street. West. Queen Street yeah. West, yeah. Food, uh, yeah, that was a good bar. So I'm going to give it happy faces for all four published. So now I've reviewed that. And uh, people can see my reviews uh, when they search in Google Maps or in the place search. So it's mobile as well as local. It's a very interesting move from face from uh, Google. To I totally on. agree. Yeah. And I mean, I'm very familiar with Yelp. and uh, Use Yelp uh, all the time. Yeah. And uh, but what I really like about this, because I use so many Google tools right now and I'm so familiar with all of the uh, different uh, products they have to offer, I just love how simple they make mm -hmm. this. I love that they have a picture right there so you yep. can kind of scan through and say, oh, I've been there. You know, I've tried that out. That's a great destination. And uh, like I said, I mean, just in a, f a few minutes, you can go through and pick a lot, lots of places that you like, which I think is a, a, a whole lot less effort than using something like Yelp, although, you know, that's a great service too. Lately, Eric Schmidt, he spoke at the Web 2.0 Summit which is going on uh, right now in San Francisco. Uh, I think it was there he said, you know, we're not really going to do a Facebook clone, that Google yes. Me that we all talked about. No, we're not going to do that. We're just going to have a lot of social integration into our mm -hmm. existing products. This is a perfect example of taking Google Places, which is their directory of businesses, and adding social to it. Because and you can see, by the way, uh, you know, I have friends, so you can see what your friends have said particularly about this. Um, and so I think that's kind of important. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think one of the things that I like that Google does is that for as long as Google has been around, they've always been simple. You know, the Google search site is very simple. <laughs> the uh, Gmail is very simple. And one thing I find about Facebook is the more features they add, the more products that they launch, the messier the interface gets, yeah. the more clumsy the whole user experience is. And I just feel that they keep slapping things on. Is where, whereas when Google rolls things out, you know, they do, you're right, they keep them separate almost in silos and they do integrate well. Um, however, they don't mess with a really great user experience and Facebook hasn't nailed the user experience there's no part of that site that's easy for anyone from businesses to personal use I think you're right and as they add features is inevitably going to get more complex more and more messy Whereas Google, I mean, it's complex and messy, but it's all in different complex and messy silos, as you yeah, say. It just, yeah, it just works. So that's one uh, thing I think. I would like to see Facebook almost clean up what they have right now. I know for the average person joining and figuring out how to manage settings and use their messaging and whatever it might be, it's cumbersome. But Facebook's got the users. Actually, Google has the users they too, do. doesn't it? They just, yeah. they just can't capitalize them on as effectively as Facebook does. You know, there's a new, uh, our friend Kevin Rose is an angel investor in a new uh, iPhone application that's kind of the opposite of Facebook. It's social photographs. It's called Path. Now, we, talk, we talked about Instagram. I love Instagram. I think yeah, Instagram is great. Yeah, I have them on the show. Yeah. And, and it, that's you take pictures. This, this is like Instagram, but there's one little difference. And I think they got a lot of press attention because of this difference entirely is, unlike Instagram, where it's more like Twitter, you follow people, they follow you. Uh, you can have an unlimited follower list and uh, unlimited number of people can follow you. This one says, nope, 50 friends, that's it. I know. They just cut it off. So they're really limiting the, the social network that you're able to maintain uh, using the service. Does that make I, sense? I, I don't know. I don't like someone telling me I can only have a certain number of friends. <laughs> and I felt like that when Facebook had the limit on their Facebook friends, you right. know, for a, quite a long time, you know, you can only have 5,000 friends on your personal account. And although that's a ton of people, I mean, 50 people isn't that much. I mean, even in surveys that have been done, the average person has, you know, 130 friends. So 50 is a pretty, um, pretty, pretty small network. But hey, maybe it will resonate with people who don't like the idea of being friends with kids they knew in kindergarten. <laughs> Dave Morin is the uh, CEO and co-founder of uh, PATH. He was at Facebook. Um, so that's, that's, you know, obviously it's got the, he's influenced by that. Maybe he saw something. It, it's, uh, you know, and clearly for you and me as public figures, 50 is not enough. 
But maybe if it's just a, a real person, uh, my problem is that my 50 friends don't all have iPhones. Mm -hmm. um, and most of them, in fact, wouldn't be participating. I mean, I love the idea you could pull up a map and see where all your friends' pictures are from. The other thing that I really think is missing is you can only tag pictures. You can't put a comment or a like, and I think that's oh, one of the really? things. Yeah, that's one of the things Instagram did really nicely. I agree with you. I love that portion of Instagram where you can make it so easy to just go through your feed of photos and just like things and leave comments. I mean, half the time I'm just reading comments on Instagram because right. it's so interesting to see what people have said. You know, both Instagram and Path take advantage of the fact that the iPhone is an excellent camera and the images are great on both of them, I have to say. I'm really enjoying the images. But I just think, why why limit your functionality? Um, I it's, in, it's interesting. It did get a lot of press. Yeah, no, it definitely got a lot of press and um, it'll be neat to see if people start using it and uh, kind of uh, feeling as though they want to be able to control their social network a little bit more and just kind of minimize it. Um, it reminds me, too, I think it's, is it tomorrow that is the National Unfriend Day? Yeah, um, Jimmy yeah. Kimmel. Now you guys, do you have Jimmy Kimmel in Canada? Yeah, we, we sure do. So he's encouraging people to uh, clean up their uh, Facebook accounts and get rid of friends who aren't really friends. That's just weird. I don't understand <laughs> what, why Jimmy Kimmel cares. I have no idea. And by the way, on the video in which he says this, he says, follow me on Twitter. So it's like, I, know. I, don't, I think this is just bizarre. It's just to get attention, obviously. Yeah. You know, it doesn't even, know. it's like, I don't get it. If he it said, is, let's get off Facebook, yeah. I think that would maybe, okay, then I'd say, okay. But it's not. It's just maybe unfriend people you don't know. I, it's like. What? Go away. Go away. You bother yeah, me. I know. Why even bother? I totally agree. It's a little bit strange. Um, Did you see but, that Virgin Atlantic is offering f uh, uh, mileage points for four square check-ins? I know. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> it's only 25 points, so it's not like it's going to get you a free ticket anywhere. But still. Actually, Leo, you know that uh, Virgin America just started flying here, right? From uh, I know. the West Coast. So if you do ever come to do the Strombo show. Because uh, I, because uh, well, and apparently Air Canada now is much better than it used to be. It's great, yeah. I fly them all the time. I, I was really learning to loathe Air Canada, but but that was a few years ago. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, I you know I think it, that sounds like a really cool promotion. I just read about that today on Mashable, um, so a good idea. And you know what I find with Foursquare is even though okay, obviously I think it's a, a, an interesting service to be able to check in and get deals, but I'm amazed at some of the creative ideas people come up with as far as using it for business. Um, I've seen so many, you know, from the tourism industry to using it on campus, and uh, it's a very, very, uh, uh, very creative out there. Well, now Foursquare has a new feature called trophy case yes and i read this and i thought immediately of you because i know you're very protective of your badges <laughs> you still are. i'm like a boy scout i can't the, yes so what I so if i go to my four square am i going to be able to do this right now or do i have to wait yeah. for an invitation Oh, I don't think you I have to wait that. for an invitation. Um, maybe that. you could try it out. So it's a better way to showcase all of your different badges. And uh, you're able to see um, when you unlock a badge if it's retired. Um, so I guess that just means expired, I'm guessing. Um, and uh, a few other things as well as uh, also the badge partner program. So you can get uh, badges from partners. Well, who are working with Foursquare. So it's, uh, there's a lot happening there. I think they're yeah. trying to obviously uh, compete with uh, a lot of their uh, services, the services out there that uh, like Gowalla and, uh, and other uh, location-based. Uh, I like the badges. I like the badges. I just got a, the Zoetrope badge for a 10 movie check-ins. And see, I have two retired badges, the Holly, Halloween 2010. Of course, can't get that anymore. And I voted uh, 2010, which I thought was a really good promotion that they did. You get a little badge because you voted if you checked in at your polling place. Uh, I would like to retire the crunked badge, uh, but apparently <laughs> apparently, I'm never going to live that one down. Overshare, there's another one I'm, I'm not real proud of. School night, that's a checking in at past 3 a.m. on a work day. Uh, the rest of them are okay. Bender, maybe I get rid of Bender. You know, so so the trophy case, I, I get to do something with that. I don't see anything here. Maybe my trophy case isn't una enabled. Maybe yet. it is not rolled out for you yeah, yet, Leo. Yeah. Um, at the I think the announcement just came out today, if I'm correct. So it's possible that uh, they haven't launched the service. This is another thing that drives me crazy about tech companies recently, Leo. Every time I turn around, there's a major announcement that's happening, uh, and then you want to go and try it. And especially for people in Canada and other parts of the world, you want right. to roll it out. Maybe in the U.S., it's invite only. I mean, it takes you forever to be able to uh, get onto the service. I wish someone would just launch something and it was there and you could use it. Yeah. 
I know what you mean. It's very frustrating. And then sometimes they make a big deal over something that's not a big deal, like the Beatles on iTunes. I know, I know. They really, yeah. every, they had the tech world buzzing yesterday because on, on Apple's uh, front page it said something, you know, amazing is going to happen. Turned out it was a Paul McCartney quote. And uh, and if anybody really thought about it, realized what the amazing thing was. But the people were speculating, oh, finally they're going to have a subscription service. And then, no, it's just the Beatles on iTunes. I know. And, you know, I think this is going to hurt some of these companies, especially with Facebook. You know, at, at first when they started having their events where, okay, you can tune in, watch it live online, a big announcement. I, I got kind of excited. But now I'm getting to the point where I'm getting all of these press releases and I'm thinking, okay, you know, you can't have a new and exciting product or launch every single week or every couple of weeks. Eventually we're just going to turn away <laughs> because it's just too much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and also I've got all the Beatles records so. What are records? <laughs> it's just, they're vinyl albums. They were, they were great. They're great in their day. They're so great. we're going to talk in just a little bit with the CEO of Flavors.me and some other things. We're also going to talk about our site of the night and our video of the week. <laughs> I can't wait for that one. But before, <laughs> before we do that, I want to tell you all about my Ford. Ah, this is a song Gina Smith taught me many years ago. I don't know if it's really appropriate. How'd it go? It was a kid's song. Uh, got four wheels and a running board. I'm a Ford, a Ford, a Ford. Honk, honk, rattle, 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 beep, beep. <laughs> oh, that's it. I'm a little hunk of tin. No one knows where I've been. Got four wheels and a running board. I'm a Ford, a Ford, a Ford. Honk, honk, rattle, 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 crash, beep, beep. That's the old days. You couldn't call the new Fords hunks of tin. They're great. They're beautiful. I love my, I love my Mustang more than anybody should love a car. And one of the things that sends me about my Ford is my Ford Sync. It is incredible. The voice-activated, hands-free calling. The whole idea here is it's safety first. Hands on the wheel, eyes on the road. But you're not disconnected from the world because you can talk to your car. Uh, it's, you know, it works great, with, by the way, uh, with the iPhone, my Android phone, uh, the new Ford, uh, the new uh, uh, Windows Phone 7. Just fantastic. So you get in. Uh, it supports streaming stereo from the Bluetooth, so I'll get in my book that I'm listening to starts up immediately. But then I press the button on the steering wheel. I'm driving, hmm, driving along, and I think I want to call Amber. I press the button on the steering wheel. Hmm, it goes, boom, and I say, phone. It goes, boom, call Amber MacArthur at work. Boom. Or if I just say, call Amber MacArthur, it'll go, call Amber MacArthur at work, on her cell, at home, on her shoe phone, and I'll say, hmm, shoe phone, and it, <laughs> boom, and it calls you. I can do that with play a song. I can do it with play a podcast. I mean, you really control what's going on. It works with the iPod. It has a USB slot, so you just connect the iPod cable, uh, the iPhone cable. Uh, I, I just love it. Um, 911 assist is great, too, if the airbags go off. Uh, you know, you get in an accident, it will call 911, send them your GPS coordinates, and then give you a chance to talk. That's it has very a, cool. Yeah, I mean, it's really neat. Um, and, of course, of course, it has... Uh, um, the turn-by-turn -turn direction. So even if you didn't get the big GPS package, which I did, but if you didn't get it, you can still say, take me uh, you know, over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house, and it knows the way. And by the way, it knows if there's bad traffic and will reroute you if needed. I could just go on and on. I think the best thing to do is to go to the website, syncmyridepodcast.com, syncmyridepodcast.com. Look at the videos, and then go to a Ford dealer. And, and don't say, I want, to, I want to test drive that great new 2011 Fiesta or the 2011 Mustang 5.0 or the great new Ford Edge or the Flex. Yeah, well, the Focus. Oh, I love the Focus. Or the, or, 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 or the Fusion. I mean, the great high. You don't, don't say, say, I just want to test drive the Sync. You can test drive a car, too, if you want. I love it. And you're going to love it, too. Take a look at the great Ford Sync. Just one more reason to buy the greatest car in the world, the Ford. SyncMyRidePodcast.com. All right, Amber, I'm ready to make a phone call. I, I have not set up any, I have not visited Flavors.me. Okay, .me. good. So I'm, I'm off the hook here. How did you find out about this? Um, you know, Chris told me that uh, he had stumbled across it. He loved it, and he was so excited one day when you know, he started to create his own homepage in just a, a few minutes using the service. And then uh, Ray Selinski, if you remember him from Toronto, does that oh, sound familiar? Oh, Selinski. Yes, 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 sorry, I Kinski. got his last name wrong, yeah, he, he wrote the very first uh, uh, podcast catcher, uh, and a great guy, and uh, great guy. and then he worked at Mahalo for a while, and I think he's got his own thing now, right? 
Yeah, he's doing a few different things, but uh, he had recommended having uh, Jonathan on the show. And I just thought this is an amazing fit because Chris literally 10 days ago said, hey, you got to come look at this and has been raving about it ever since. Well, I want to pause here for a moment because he is not responding. Let me ask <laughs> Eileen to come in here. I'm a little hunk of tin. I love that you have your own jingles now, Leo, for the ad. No one knows where I have. You know how to read my handwriting? I think that's correct, right? Yeah, I'll double check. <laughs> that's what I got. But uh, no such person. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I know he was super excited to come on. So. Yeah, yeah, unless we took so long to get to him that he had to go to lunch or something. The uh, Ford uh, is running Microsoft Car as the bottom software, and then they've tuned it quite a bit. In fact, on my Ford Touch, they've added even more. So uh, it's actually running Windows, uh, a version of Windows CE, I think. Oh, there's actually a YouTube video of this. I shouldn't really sing it because it's not... Ah, I got the wrong name. This is I'm a Little Pile of Tin. I'm a little pile of tin. Nobody knows what shape I'm in. Got four wheels and a running board. I'm a Ford. Oh, I'm a Ford. Hong Kong, rattle, 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 crash, beep, beep. Hong Kong, rattle, 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 crash, beep, beep. Hong Kong, rattle, 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 crash, beep, beep. Hong Kong. <laughs> I thought my version was actually much more spirited and lively. I really liked your version. <laughs> obviously, it's yeah, definitely we, more lively. Obviously, I should record a YouTube video. You should. You should yes. do your own video. Now I've got Jonathan on the line. Fine. I'm sorry. It was my fault. I had the wrong, uh, wrong number. And uh, oh, wait a minute. Unable to connect. Wait a minute. Maybe he hasn't added me yet. Okay. Yeah, it's one of those. I just, I just invited him. He was really excited to be on. You're not uh, buying time because you're trying at the service, are you, Leo? No. So. There he is. I'm here. Hey. Hi. Sorry. No, Sorry no, no, no. That. It's not your fault. It's my fault. It was all my fault. I had the wrong address in there. Well, well good enough. All right. Thank you, so thank you so much for having me on. Thanks for coming on, Jonathan. Yeah, thank you. So I've been teasing Leo a little bit about uh, flavors.me. Um, I haven't let him try it, but as soon as we start this interview, I'm sure he's going to dive in. So in the meantime, could you tell us a little bit about how you came up with the idea and what it's all about? Sure. So the, the simple idea is that Flavors allows anyone to create a dynamic web presence using content from all around the web. So the key idea is that we are all living our lives online, creating content um, constantly, whether it be uploading photos to Flickr or videos to YouTube or statuses to Facebook. And the idea is Flavors makes it really easy for you to uh, aggregate all of that content you're creating um, into your web presence, which then uh, automates itself going forward and you wind up with really a singular identity, something that's a coherent whole of, of everything that you're doing online. And it looks like it costs you a million bucks and you paid a fancy designer to make it for you. <laughs> so there you go. So it's kind of like I've seen about.me. So because I kind of similar to that, although this walks you through a lot more than about.me does. So well, I can I say, say instead, I could say saying welcome. I could say Leo Laporte is the president of the internet. <laughs> That's a good start, so, Leo. Yes. So, so, of course, the, the nice thing is that the entire design experience is real time. Um, this was so, something that took us a long, uh, long period of time to get right. So both the, the process of adding your, your text there, your description, and then going ahead and adding services, everything really happens in real time. The only time there's a, a page refresh, so to speak, is when you, you change the underlying layout. Okay. Um, I guess to jump back a little bit uh, in terms of why we came up with flavors, um, we originally started thinking of it uh, back in 2007, uh, sort of at the height of the Facebook application craze when everyone thought that 
widgets were going to be the primary mechanism by which we syndicated content. And I think that the key realization for us was that there is a whole world of APIs um, that's available that allow programmers to get access to structured data. So it was once we, we had the idea that there is this whole web of, of APIs that we can stitch together, um, we realized we could then make it really easy for people to stylize that data and again, uh, be able to create their own uh, web presence using all that, that content they're creating. Um, I'm so, doing, so I should just point out that as Jonathan's talking, I'm doing it right now uh, in real time, walking through it. And I've already added, it's been very simple. I've already added my, my uh, Twitter stream, my uh, Facebook stream, my Netflix stream. I can add posturous WordPress. This is cool, right. but I haven't applied a design yet. So I should really look at these. Oh, look at all the different designs. It's just, I mean, this is the one thing that really attracted me to it, Jonathan. I know you've touched on this, just how easy it is and how beautiful the design and the whole experience is as far as adding all of these other uh, fees. Except I want this grid design and I have to pay for that one. Huh? So, so you have to have a paid account to uh, get some of the additional features. Correct. Yeah. How much? It's $20 a year. Okay. That's not bad. Uh, and in exchange for that, you are able to use a custom domain. So rather than it being uh, flavors.me, say, forward slash Jonathan, what I'm using is jonathanmarcus.me. Right. Uh, maybe it's pretty cool. You can pull up my page and, and we can kind of go through that. Oh, let's do that. Okay. So it's jonathanmarcus.me. Correct. Oh, yeah. So in that case, I'm using the URL that I own, which is jonathanmarcus.me. Uh, additionally, we give you access to real-time statistics. Um, in addition to the three layouts that we offer to the, the free users, there's another. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there's, so, your, there's your, there's your uh, Shina Ibu uh, puppies there. They're all grown up. Exactly. Yeah. Two Shiba, Shiba Inu Inu puppies. Yeah. I think that the really great thing that, that we've been able to do is if you click on any of those links on the side, so maybe click on my music playlist. Okay. Oh, so, neat. Right on top of it. And go ahead and click play on any of those. That's cool. A little ludicrous and you don't really like ludicrous and Lil Wayne, do you? Oh, I'm a big Little Wayne fan. Uh, <laughs> Maybe you can explain to me, because I cannot understand. I mean, it's, it's, it's not that I don't like rap. I do love it, but uh, Little Wayne's got such a whiny voice. Yeah, you know, it's fair. I think for my, my first two years or so, my brother's actually a big Little Wayne fan. So he got I thought you. It was, thought it was complete garbage, yeah. but when you listen to the lyrics, yeah, I think there's yeah. few okay. that's better. But so the, the key idea, getting back to the, the <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I didn't mean get you into a little Wayne uh, explanation of uh, fit here. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge, huge little Wayne fan, so happy to do it. But um, what I've done there is I've uploaded a song every day to Tumblr, and then ah. what we have to do is pull in that Tumblr feed, and then essentially, essentially turn everything off, but the audio feed. That's cool. So, and see, so, you're turning me on to some new music here, which I kind of like. Well, good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and I think that's that's part of the idea of actually having all of my music listening habits on my page that it makes it really easy for anyone this who is comes to slick. Me. Yeah. Yeah. It's so nice. I've got your Lost FM here, your Insta paper bookmarks, and all of it is kind of superimposed. You haven't left the page. Now, how does Netflix, or, I mean, not Netflix, uh, well, Netflix is one, but how does Flickr, for instance, feel about the fact that you're scraping Flickr to put this over? Your page. Well, we're not scraping anything. This is an RSS feed. No, it's not an RSS feed. Although, though, we do support RSS feeds. We're just tapping into the publicly available APIs. Oh, okay. Okay. So this is your data, Leo, and they've obviously given everyone access to it via APIs, assuming you've set your your privacy settings correctly. Um, and then, right, the big distinction, I suppose, with flavors is that we allow you to pull all of that content into your page. And then stylize it. And, and stylizing it really being the key because we, we allow it to become a real part of your web presence as opposed to a tacked on widget of sorts. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then the, the big win is that the end user, the person who's viewing your page, has a really easy time browsing all of your content in line and in a really gorgeous setting. So 
there's often people who prefer to consume, say, the Flickr photos on flavors as opposed to, to going off to, to Flickr. I mean, what really makes this possible, if you already have all of these other sites set up, is to create a single page that really does aggregate all your content. I think this is very beautiful, very nicely done. It's really nice. Yeah. And, and yeah. obviously the monetization comes from the pro accounts. Right, which we actually upgraded you to oh. uh, the last minute or so. So you actually have access to, to all of those features you didn't before. Well, they're fast. I, I could have given you the saw buck. I mean, uh, I'm not broke, but okay. Yeah, we're, we're an easy sell. <laughs> so, and I might have to change my title from Leo Laporte as the president of the internet, but, uh, <laughs> oh, look, now I can do some other, uh, let's do the grid, the grid layout, see what that right, looks like. The, the grid is really awesome. Yeah. The, the really grid nice. is, oh, so now it's pulled in, now it's started to pull in uh, my Twitter feed before it didn't have it. Uh, or no, it did, but that layout didn't support it. I get it. So which no, no, no. It, it does support it. Uh, it's just a function of how it's going to be presented. I see. So I have to do the plus to show it. I get it. Okay. Right. Which one well, do you use? I like yours. Sidebar? I'm using, either using sidebar or split. I think sidebar may be the easier one. Okay. Cool. This is really neat. It's really neat. My, uh, fiance, Chris is using it a lot. Um, He's just at flavors.me slash Chris Dick, and he is uh, a journalist, photojournalist, and so he has a giant picture in his background of him shooting out on the ice, and it's just a very cool way to um, kind of show off the work that you do, and like you said, have all the feeds and his LinkedIn, so his, his uh, resume can come up on the right-hand side of the page, but he fantastic. still has a website as well, but uh, it's still, it's a... A really, really this is fantastic design. And, yeah, and, the, and then the a couple other things I'd like like to mention. Part of the beauty of the way we've structured things is that we actually give the the site creator the ability to turn off certain portions of the feed. So, for example, if I'm using Ping FM and I'm posting my status to both Twitter and Facebook, I don't want to double stream in my flavors page. Right. We make it really easy for you to toggle that. The, the the status off on either one. Same sort of thing with photos or videos. So an example would be, I don't uh, upload any of my videos to YouTube, but I watch a lot of video on YouTube. I upload all my videos to Vimeo. Um, so what I've done is I've turned off the upload video portion on YouTube, and I'm just displaying videos that I've, I've watched. So it almost becomes a curated content wow. stream as to something I've created. This um, is really great. Kind of allow you to do that for each service. So currently we support, I think it's 25, or maybe it's, we just released support for Behance and Goala. So I think maybe now it's up to 27. We should be supporting um, north of 50 wow. uh, in short order. Amazing. Uh, so there, there won't be any service that you can't plug in. And then just to get back to the layouts, I think that's really something that, another thing that distinguishes um, what we've done at Flavors and that is to really build a system that allows everyone to walk away with a unique and, and personalized website. Right. So if, if you walked away with something that looked just like Amber's, um, you know, that there wouldn't be nearly as much value. So we kind of think of it as we built a simple system that has endless possibilities and really allows anyone to create something that's unique and personal to them that will kind of look and feel different to, to everyone else's. Um, and we've done that really um, with a, a system that allows you to change, say, the background, the color palette, the layout, uh, or the font. So there really aren't that many different variables, and yet what we're able to produce um, is, is an endless variety of, of different home pages. This is great. I like it. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I was playing with it. Uh, go ahead, Amber. Ask a question. You know, I was going to say it is one of those sites. I'm, kind of, I'm waiting to this see what Leo fun. does. This is fun. This is really you want to kind of you want to play with, and you yeah. want to quickly change all the fonts, and you know, you change your background. It's very image responsive, and, which uh, I really like. And it just makes you know, it a cinch. A, a great place to visit to get a, a sense of what's possible is our directory, which is just flavors.me forward slash directory. Okay. Um, kind of browse through and see all the, the wonderful things that people have created, um, which is now in the many thousands. So the directory is sort of becoming uh, both a, a source of inspiration 
for you as the, the page creator and then and then a, a form of people discovery. Yeah, look at that. This is great. Right, so you can see everyone's looks different uh, and unique um, and, of course, hopefully pretty great. Mm -hmm. Of course, this I mean, if you always think puts... about how long it used to take to create a site like this, this is what always amazes me, right, yeah. Leo? I mean, yeah. to... so you you actually clicked on John Ware, who happens to be our lead developer and CTO. I could kind of uh, tell he knows what he's doing here. <laughs> <laughs> I should also mention that that Ray is actually a full time um, employee of of Flavors. And... Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, very much. An, he's been a very much an integral process ever since we launched, which was back in February of keeping the site up and running and um, really focusing on our infrastructure. So Ray is, is very much an integral part of the, uh, of the Flavors team. Uh, this is, what, what is this written in? This is really, really nicely done. Uh, it's all done in Python. I know Ray's uh, a big Python fan. That's why I asked. Ray's yeah. a big Python guy, and we, we've actually just shifted a good portion of our, um, of our database stuff over to Cassandra, which um, everybody's using now. That's the new Facebook messaging platform, too. Yeah. Right. So, so Ray was in charge of that. Um, we've also just finished a pretty big rewrite to our front end. Um, the key idea being: so currently, we support twenty-five services. For us to bring on a new service, it involves both engineering resources and design resources, and a lot of respects, um, it requires us duplicating work we've already done. So think of something like Gowalla. We just added Gowalla, but we've supported um, Foursquare for months now. Basically, what we did is abstract our process away such that we treat all photos the same and all videos the same and essentially allow us to create building blocks so that now adding Gowalla doesn't require any more design resources. The design has kind of been done from the Foursquare side of things. So that's why... When I say we're, we should be able to get to 50 or more services in short order, it's because we've actually put in the, the work to build a system on the front end that allows us to reuse a lot of the, the core building blocks. Hmm. So I think the focus for us is, is building systems. We kind of think of, of flavors as a system that allows you to, to build a web presence. And then from there, <laughs> different sets of smaller systems within it that allow us to, to scale the platform. Well, it's really, really slick. And uh, so it's completely free for people to use right now. But like you said, you do, you can uh, buy some of the more advanced uh, designs. Correct. Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I got distracted because I can't stop. So it's a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I've been playing a little bit with about.me and I have to say this, uh, with all due respect to about.me really is, uh, is a little bit more of what I was looking for. Look at this. I just put my Flickr photos right here and, this is so nice. I mean, they're just they're there, and it's just very easy in a in a kind of nice yeah. light boxy way to do it. Yeah. To be fair, we um, we launched the company on the twenty third of February, so we've been live just shy of nine months. But you know, there's been a good two years worth of work that's gone into it, so it would make sense that we're uh, more of a mature. Sure. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Hey, thank you so much, Jonathan. Really neat, and thanks for upgrading me. I will. Uh, I'll be playing with this uh, a lot. Pleasure. Thank you, <laughs> thank you so much me. for joining us. It. It's uh, thanks, uh, guys. Very cool service. I know people will love it. Flavors dot me and Jonathan Marcus is the CEO, and uh, but it's a neat. That's a neat site. We've got a few more minutes, Amber, before we wrap it up. Your site of the night. All right, so uh, Site of the Night is a really simple site. It's called Food Spotting, and uh, it is out of San Francisco, and it's for anyone out there who likes food. Uh, some people have called it kind of like Foursquare for food, where you go and you take pictures of uh, a food that you have at different restaurants, and you share those photos with a community who, of people who are also food lovers, and they just won an award, a Mashable award, uh, where uh, they were rating a bunch of different new startups, and uh, Food Spotting uh, took the prize. You know what? This it's funny because uh, I, I'm a member of Food Spotting, and I kind of got replaced by Instagram because um, it's, it's you know it's another case of using your iPhone to take pictures of what you're eating and what you're doing. And but there's kind of a, there's the nom nom that you do when you when there's stuff that you like, and it's kind of fun. 
Yeah, it's definitely kind of fun. And they definitely, they've built up a community quite quickly. And uh, it's just a, a, a neat site to kind of uh, dive into if you're going to a new city and you want to check out the, what food looks like at one of the restaurants in that city. I mean, it's, there's still not a ton of content there. Um, but from a, for some of the big cities in the U.S., they're definitely starting to populate them with some great images. It'll make you hungry, let's put it that way. Yeah, it's making me hungry right now. <laughs> Foodspotting.com. And finally... Yes, our video of our the week. Well, Leo, I searched uh, for a video of the week, mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't find anything like our, our normal videos, you know, musicians that have done neat things on the web, but I did find this. Uh, Kanye West, who was rapping, uh, surprisingly, on a Delta Airlines flight recently. It's a very short video, um, but he surprised a lot of the passengers on that particular flight that day. Well, as we always do, uh, we will wrap up with that. So I'm going to say good night to you, Amber MacArthur, and tell everyone... That you can find her at ambermac.com. And, of course, her TV show, a fabulous TV show it is, is on CP24. Look for Web Nation. And her video podcast, Command N, is at commandn.tv. And the book, Power Friending. Which Power is Friending. Everywhere. And where should people contact the Lavin Agency if they want you to speak? Yeah, they can contact the Lavin Agency or just uh, visit my site and uh, send me off an email or find me on Twitter. You know, there's so many ways to find us these days, right, Leo? <laughs> yeah. Just go to Amber <laughs> Max okay. about, uh, what is it, what is it, flavors.me page. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Amber. We'll see you next Thanks time. So much. Take care on Net at Night. Go ahead, Kanye. But I heard she got a baby by Fester. She said her best friend used to mess with Usher. I don't care what none of y'all say, I still love her. Now I ain't saying she a gold digger, uh. But she ain't messing with no broke, broke, uh-uh. Now I ain't saying